second thessalonians chapter 3 finally brethren pray for us that the word of the lord may have free course and be glorified just as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for not all have faith But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one and we have confidence concerning you both that you do and will do the things we command you now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ but we command you brethren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you withdraw from every brother who leads a disorderly life and not according to the tradition which he received from us for you yourself know how you ought to follow us for we when we were not directly among you nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge but worked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you not because we do not have the authority but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us for even when we were with you we command you this if any one will not work neither shall eat for we hear that we are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner not working at all but are busy bodies now those who are such we command and exhort through our lord jesus christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread but as for you brethren do not grow weary in doing good and if any one does not obey our word in this epistle note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed yet do not count him as an enemy but admonish him as a brother now may the lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way the lord be with you all the salutation of paul with my own hand which is a sign in every epistle so i write the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen the first epistle of paul the apostle to timothy chapter 1 paul an apostle of jesus christ by the commandment of god our savior and the lord jesus christ our hope to timothy my true son in faith grace mercy and peace from god our father and jesus christ our lord As I urged you when I went into Macedonia remains in Ephesus that you may chant some they teach no other doctrine nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which comes by faith Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart from a good conscience and from sincere faith from which some having strayed have turned aside to idle talk desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm but we know that law is good if one uses it lawfully knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous person but for the lawless and indiscordinate for the ungodly and for sinners for the unholy and profane for killers of fathers and killers of mothers for murderers for fornicators for male homosexuals for kidnappers for liars for perjurers and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine according to the glorious gospel of the blessed god who was committed to my trust and i thank jesus christ our lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a prosecutor and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life now to the king eternal immortal invisible to god who alone is wise be honor and glory forever and ever this charge i commit to you son timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and good conscience with some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck of whom are hyphenus and alexander 
whom I deliver to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. First Timothy chapter two. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. who gave himself a ransom for all and to be testified in due time for which i was appointed a preacher and an apostle i am speaking the truth in christ and not lying a teacher of the gentiles in faith and truth therefore i desire that the men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting in the manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with propriety and moderation not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing but which is proper for women profi- prof- professing godliness with good works let a woman learn in silence with all submission that i do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man but to be in silence for adam was formed first then eve and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived fell into transgression Nevertheless she will be saved in child bearing if they continue in faith love and holiness with self control 1 Timothy chapter 3 This is a faithful saying if a man desires a position of a bishop he desires a good work a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife temperate sober minded of good behavior hospitable able to teach not given to wine nor violent nor greedy for money but gentle not quarrelsome not covetous one who rules in his own house well having his children in submission with all reverence for if a man does not know how to rule his own house how will he take care of the church of god not a novice let lest being puffed up with pride he fell into the same condemnation as the devil moreover he must have a good testimony among those who are outside lest he should fall into reproach and the snare of the devil likewise deacons must be reverent not double tongued not given too much wine not greedy for money holding the mystery of faith mystery of faith which with a pure conscience but let these also first to be proved then let them serve as deacons being found blameless likewise their wives must be reverent not slanderers temperate faithful in all things let deacons of the husband of one wife rule in their children and their own houses well for those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus these things i write to you though i hope to come to you shortly but if i am delayed i write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of god which is the church of the living god the pillar and ground of truth and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness god was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit seen by the angels preached among the gentiles believed on in the world received up in the glory first timothy chapter 4 Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy having their own conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished in the words of faith of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives fables and exercise yourself rather to godliness for bodily exercise profits a little but godliness is profitable for all things having promise of the life that now is of that which is to come this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance for to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living god who is the savior of all men especially of those who believe 
these things command and teach let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers in world in in conduct in love in spirit in faith in purity till i come give attention to reading to exhortation to doctrine do not let neglect, neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands by the presbytery meditate on these things give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all take heed to yourself and to the doctrine continue in them for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you first timothy chapter 5 do not rebuke an older man but exhort him as a father the younger men as brothers the older women as mothers the younger as sisters with all purity honor widows who are really widows but if any widow has children or grandchildren let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents for this is good and acceptable before god Now she who is really a widow and left alone trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayer night and day but she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives and these things command that they may be blameless but if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever Do not let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number and not unless she has been the wife of one man with a reputation for good works if she has brought up children if she has lodged strangers if she has washed the saints feet if she has relieved the afflicted if she has diligently followed every good work but refuse the younger widows for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ they desire to marry having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith and besides they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house and not only idle but also gossips and busy bodies saying things which they ought not therefore i decide that the younger widows marry bear children manage the house give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully for some have already turned aside after satan if any believing man or woman has widows let them relieve them do not let the church be burdened that it may relieve those who really who are really widows let the elders who rule well be accounted worthy of double honor especially those who labor in the word and doctrine for the scripture says you shall not muzzle an ox while it tre- treads out the grain and the laborer is worthy of his wages do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all and the rest also may fear i charge you before god and the lord jesus christ and the elder and elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice to doing nothing with partiality do not lay hands on anyone hastily nor share in other people's sins keep yourselves pure no longer drink only water but use a little wine for your stomach shake and your frequent infirmities some men sins are clearly evident preceding them to judgment but those of some men follow later likewise the good works of some are clearly evident and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden